dear students welcome back to at another presentation on micro pumps so in our last presentation we had discussed on micro pumps in general as it was presented micro pumps are mems devices primarily used for microfluidic applications so it involves the transport of small quantities of biochemical fluidic samples in the range of nanoliters to microliters per minute there are various types of micro pumps available based on the application and however diaphragm based micro pumps are more common so we had discussed about diaphragm based micro pump in our last class in today's presentation we will study yet another micro pump called the piezo electric micro pump before we go into the piezo electric micro pump in we will start with the modeling of a micro pump as a continuation to our last class we will take the example of the diaphragm based micro pump in this presentation also i take the help of the following references now coming to the modeling of the micro pump a pump can be modeled by considering the diaphragm as a circular plate so as shown in the figure the circular plate with clamped edges is subjected to uniform mechanical pressure in the lateral directions so you can see that the radius of the plate can be mentioned as r not and the horizontal and the vertical axis are denoted as r and z respectively as shown in the figure so this is the figure now when an electric field is applied to the plate the diaphragm is displaced and the displacement along the r direction will be expressed as z is equal to c into r not squared minus r squared to the whole square where c is a constant which is related to transverse strain from the above expression we can derive the derivative of z that is z, dz is equal to 4c into r not squared minus r squared r into dr now the change in volume within the pump chamber is given by v is equal to the integral ranging from 0 to z not pi r squared into dz where z not is the displacement at the center continuing further if we can put dz from equation 2 in equation 3 the changing and changing the limits from z to r so equation 3 can be rewritten as v is equal to 4 pi c integral 0 to r not r not squared minus r squared the whole cube into dr which equates to 1/3 pi c r not to the power of 6 so the volume rate or pumping speed which is expressed in microliter per minute at the atmospheric pressure can be expressed as vs is equal to 60 times fd into v which is equal to 20 pi c r not to the power of 6 where fd is the frequency of the diaphragm typical values of pumping rate are found to be between 50 to 70 microliters per minute at an applied voltage of 2 to 3 volts peak to peak pump pressure can be about 600 pascals at this voltage and the operational frequency ranges from 10 to 30 hertz the overall dimensions of mems micro pumps can be accordingly modeled as approximately to be 5000 by 5000 by 1000 micrometers with respect to length width and height respectively following the modeling of a micro pump let us now move on to the design consideration of a microfluidic system 
Now, three important design parameters are considered while designing the microfluidic system. They are preparation of a suitable surface, well-defined paths for the liquid to flow, and appropriate selection of the materials. Now, in most microfluidic applications like chemical analysis and synthesis, the liquids are mostly aqueous solutions. For transportation of these solutions, the desired surfaces and pathways are hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So what is hydrophobic? Now hydrophobic is the condition of water molecules staying away from the surface or it actually ripples from the water molecules. So hydrophobic surface consists of thin layer applied to the surface via dip coating or spin coating and in most of the cases self-assembled monolayers are also used. Now most of the microfluidic devices are fabricated in glass or silica or silicon based substance. Now let us see what is uh, the condition prevailing in the hydrophilic surface. Now hydrophilic surface is opposite to that of hydrophobic which means that it has an affinity for water molecules or water. The surface is showing an affinity to water based components. So these areas are called wettability patterns because they show an affinity to water molecules. They are usually produced by three methods such as photolithography, local plasma treatment or even by micro contact printing. Now photolithographic processing techniques are commonly used to develop channels in the surface of a planar substrate that are then covered with a thin oxide layer of the similar material. Now other materials include quartz which are actually slow etching materials to develop the channels. So after developing a channel with the help of glass or quartz the etched channels are sealed by high temperature annealing process. Microfluid devices prepared entirely in silicon are sealed by wafer bonding. Now it's not only uh, silicon based substrates, polymer based substrates are also good alternative. Using plastics is primarily driven by the fact that these materials are less expensive and easier to manipulate than silica based substrates. Further, plastics are well suited to casting, molding, laser ablation. Ablation means removal of the substrate by vaporization or chipping or such erosive processes and also machining operations. Now coming on to the next type of micro pump. Let us now look into a serious limitation of pumping liquid through micro conduits which is explained as follows which shows that or which says that the pressure drop for a liquid flow in circular conduits is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the radius and thus the diameter of the conduit. So, as an example, if the diameter reduces to half, then the required pumping power is increased 16 times. Moreover, the surface tension effect also becomes more pronounced in liquid flow in minute conduits. So, coupled with the surface tension effect and increasing in the power required for pumping, Conventional pumping methods for volumetric flow of liquids in micro conduits are thus not feasible in an engineering sense. So, there are a number of ways that effective pumping of liquids in micro scale conduits can be achieved. Common practices in the industry include electrohydrodynamic pumping with electroosmosis and electrophoretic pumping methods. Now what is electroosmosis? Electroosmosis is nothing but the osmosis pr procedure conducted in the presence of an electric field. 
while electrophoretic pumping is nothing but the separation or migration of ionic particles with the help of an electric field which means that you can have an anode and a cathode in such an arrangement with the conducting medium realized with an electrolyte between the anode and the cathode. So we will now discuss another effective electro effective micro pumping technique which is called as piezoelectric pumping. It uses surface forces instead of volumetric pressure to prompt the flow of liquids in minute conduits. Now this is built on the principle of producing wavy motion on the flexible wall of minute tubes in which the liquid fall, flows. Now here, here is the diagram which shows that the minute conduits are actually coated with piezoelectric material and as a result of which the flow of the liquid will be in a wavy motion. Piezoelectric materials coated outside the tube wall will generate the wave motion and the wave motion of the tube wall exert for forces on the contained fluid for the required motion. Let us now look into one such construction. Now the figure illustrates, now here is the figure. The figure illustrates the working principle of a piezoelectric pump for microflow in a minute tube. The tube usually has a thin wall in the order of few micrometers. The thin membrane wall makes the tube highly flexible. The outside wall is coated with piezoelectric film such as zinc oxide with aluminium interdigital transducers. Now, when a radio frequency voltage is applied to the interdigital transducers, a mechanical stress is produced in the piezoelectric layer. The mechanical stress so generated can produce flexural acoustic waves in the membrane tube wall. The wave motion of the tube wall can produce a pumping effect to move the contained fluid as illustrated in the previous diagrams. Now the laws of physics indicate that the force generated by the surface of the tube wall is proportional to the amplitude of the acoustic wave generated in the wall by piezoelectric effect and it decays exponentially towards the center. So this is the illustration. The so force generated is actually decaying exponentially towards the center. So the variation is as shown in the figure. Now this variation of the force results in a more uniform velocity of the fluid inside the tube. Now you can see the variation in velocity based on the force that is developed which is exponentially decaying to the center. However, this will actually uh, bring out a uniform velocity at the output of the tube. So this is how a piezo pump is effectively constructed. With that, I wind up this presentation. In our next presentation, we will discuss about the different types or more different types of micro pumps. Thank you.